Hey guys, today I am going to talk about a very serious issue. I did want to present the facts. Once we get to Wedge's portion, I will just be reading the text messages or the Twitter. I'm sure that there are text messages I'm not privy to and direct messages as mentioned. Uh, but essentially, uh, what I think is interesting and the goal of many YouTube creators or several YouTube creators as Jew Warrior, he was a very big member of the gaming community. A lot of people supported him and they thought he was like Mr. Rogers. Well, it turned out he was grooming young females to do bad things to them. And this, he would target females with low self-esteem, uh, who were not popular, who didn't fit in, and who were attractive. They were good people, but they were suspect to an influence of a popular YouTube channel. And I don't know if this is exactly what's going on, but it has a lot of the same. So I follow the video gaming community quite a bit. And essentially everyone loved this guy. Then he committed suicide, which was very sad. Everyone made tribute videos. And then finally one of his victims just said enough is enough. Like I cannot watch people uh create all these amazing videos about him and not tell the truth. So she did. Now she was obviously harassed quite a bit. And it took a lot of it took some time for the video gaming community to realize, wait a second, this guy is a monster. And like they said, please remember, uh, just because someone is nice to you does not mean that they're a good person. Maybe they're nice to you because they want to use you, abuse you, or do things to you that you don't want to have done. It appears that those are the type of girls he sought out. Not super pretty, physically awkward, socially awkward, insecure, and unsure of themselves. What a load of blank this is. I tried to tell Change the Channel about Justin being a potential predator weeks ago. And you wouldn't believe me. Now, CA essentially proved me right. We now return to you with your monthly, regularly scheduled dose. So this is a video gaming website. Um, people are... So this happens in YouTube. It happens. You have a famous YouTube creator. He's going to... Or a popular YouTube creator in a niche. He will use pressure and weight to make others submit to what he wants done. Wedge has a interesting way to do this. So Wedge, I'm not selfish. I donated my whole magic collection to St. Jude. And anytime anyone says anything negative about me or anything I talk about it, I talk about it constantly. He has really used this as his shield um, a lot of people work volunteer work. A lot of people donate. Um, I have never seen this type of behavior for someone who's done volunteer work where he might. How many women in the community does he follow so he can see when the tweet might be something to look into. He is creepy. Honestly, one day the claims will surface. Mark my words, anyone who does charity work so they can constantly chime about doing charity work is not a good person. He's such a self-righteous asshole. I swear he mentions his St. Jude charity work every chance he gets. How is he popular in this community? This is literally the reason I follow him, to see how many random MTG nobody girl posts he can like. We should start a spreadsheet. Uh, again, I'm just going to read. I'm not going to throw my opinion in. Giving away his collection for charity? Someone paid to make him give it away. Get that hero or cape. This is quite true. He has, how much is his collection? And how many donations did he receive? And how many times has he mentioned it? Um, you don't do charity work to 
You do it because you want to help, not because you want to get more donations. Uh, he donated his entire MTG collection to a kid's charity, the Passive Virtue Signaling Defense Creepy Indeed. He never played, so his collection must be worthless. Bunch of intro deck cards at best. If a member of the MTG community gives away the entire collection, is it still a member? And here's my evidence. A lot of you, I provide evidence to you uh, from the horse's mouth himself. And you still don't believe me, but this is stuff that he says. So Meeb is, I saw her profile picture because they were talking about me and a video I made. And so there's a video with her profile picture. I believe she is a young female magic player. So replying to Meeb, how can they afford all of that when he can't pay utilities? Replying to Meeb, don't... Didn't know he had a rapist, sexist, bigoted, drunk sociopath in the community. That's scary. To you, they are. My DMs are so open, I can't properly describe how open they are. I will read this again in uh, my wedge voice. My DMs are so junior cheeseburgering open. Look at this cheese goose out of the opening. <laughs> All right, focus. Okay, I gotta focus because I know I will, will get sidetracked. I just gotta read the tweets. We're long overdue for a chat session. Love you here if you need me. L okay, love. It's not love you. It's a love symbol. Maybe you were destined for DM smiley face. So this happened because of a video I made around this point in time, which was July. You can go back and see the video where I thought it was pretty creepy. Some of the things he was talking to these and. I, at the time, they had their profile pictures, and it was like, wow, this is kind of like what just happened in the video game community, and might be the only way. I'll stop responding to your tweets. They keep, they keep bringing you in because of me. Same. <laughs> oh my God. So I remember what happened. Uh, Bella Love Story in Twilight. I fit neither of those, and I'm very excited about that. I'm right here. I don't know, like, you know, I don't know. Um, one of my work, or my one of my former workers, her brother, um, acted and behaved on social media exactly the same way. He's in jail now for being a sexual predator. I think I mentioned that before, and. Man, like he was targeting um, females who were 12 to 14 who enjoyed cosplay. And that's how he reached out. Uh, this is not a technique unknown to creepy people. They will use their positions of power and they will use their, quote, social media power to attract younger females uh, who are much younger than they are and then do this to them. 50 hours. You can have whatever you like. I'll, I'll read it in wedge voice. You can have whatever you like at the Wendy's. I think this is pretty creepy. And that's just, oh, I, I okay, I got to stick to reading the tweets because a lot of you will be super offended if I throw in my opinions about this. I'm right here. Less than a week, just saying. I mean, this is the stuff that's happening publicly on Twitter where he's debating Donald Trump and he's tweeting at Donald Trump. So it's super public and yet it's super creepy. So imagine like what's happening under the DM. So when we talk about Jew Wario or the guy who's now in a prison who, you know, was very, very bad behavior. Uh, they did this all in, um, they did this all privately in private text messages, private Facebook DMs. They, no one did this publicly on Twitter. I feel this so much. Thought you had daddies for this. Men are allowed to have an opinion. Less than two weeks. DMs are always... So you would imagine this is probably like the same tweet, right? It's not. It's different days. He just keeps saying the DMs are open. They're so open. You won't believe how open they are. They're Donald Trump-like open. And this is he still makes videos 
I think he, that's whenever he says he still makes videos, he's referring to me, of course. We really need to hang out and talk about life. Six, 26 hours straight. Where is he getting this exact number from? And are you really only going to talk life for 26 hours? Or are you going to do like other stuff during that time period? Is there like other stuff that a older male would want to do? I don't know. Someone help me. I'm so confused. Ready whenever you are. Yeah, we've had this conversation before. We're too compatible for her to even consider marrying anyone else. What the heck? It's actually very sweet. Yeah, we're nothing like these people. We have a real love story. So is he tweeting at Nick and Prince? Or is he tweeting at this young female magic player? Who I assume was a magic player. Damn it, I can do one of those. Just let me have this. Listen, I'm proud of my... Oh my gosh. I just puked a little in my mouth. And it kind of tasted like a cheeseburger from Wendy's. Okay, focus. I gotta, I gotta focus because I got to get, I have to get to the end because the end is very interesting. Legit me. Well, you're too, you're cute too. So there, one in a forty-three chance. I've been in worse situations. <laughs> what the? Bl okay, all right. I, uh, I can't do this anymore without like telling you what I feel. So. So if you have a job, you have coworkers, you have people you talk to and you socialize and you know what is right and what is wrong. When you go to college or grad school, you have friends, you have peers. For me, I have employees around my same age. Wedge doesn't have anyone his same age. You know this because he doesn't have a local game store. You know this because he doesn't work anywhere. So working in office place, I hate paying rent for my office place, and I hate we we we're getting a new office in Humble. Don't ask me, but we're doing it because there's something to be said about having like visitors and having uh, workers your same age that you can hang out with. And and the story about the guy who's currently in jail, and I know this story very well. It's because he didn't have that. He was he lived at his parents' home. Um, a lot of these serial a lot of serial killers live with their parents and he was repressed. He didn't know how to socialize in real life and he doesn't have any day-to-day -day interactions. Like I know it doesn't seem like very much, but when you go to uh, work at a Starbucks or a Walmart, you have working relationships. Even if you hate your supervisor, even if you hate your coworkers, that still teaches you what society values and how you can behave. Um, if a coworker saw this creepy behavior, they would need to report you. But because there are no co coworkers, there are no bosses, there's no managers, this creepy behavior just continues to increase until eventually uh, something bad happens. And it's not that I wish upon this, but I wanted to make this video to put it out there because it would be the uh, it would be the saddest I told you video ever. And um, you know, a lot of times this stuff can be avoided if it's, if a coworker is like, hey, dude, you, you got to like not do that. Like you have to like act appropriately and not do what you're doing to the, um, I don't know if you guys understand what I'm talking about. I had, it's just very creepy. Uh, it's just not something that I would uh, wish upon anyone, but once you, you know my stance on felons and sexual offenders and this stuff. I don't, I think unless they have a come to God moment, a come to Jesus moment, it's done. Um, they will always behave this way. And the only reason that they don't do the same actions is now that they are on a sexual registry. They're being watched closely. They have, you know, a police officer who knows where they live. Everyone in the neighborhood knows where these sexual offenders live and that their kids shouldn't go around that area. Sometimes they're barred from living in certain areas. Um, that's because our society realizes they can't control themselves. Now, if they went to jail and then they came out of jail and they were fully healed all the time or not going to behave this way, then we wouldn't have those uh, safeguards in place, right? We'd be like, all right, cool. You're good. 
And we don't have that for many other crimes, actually the majority of crimes. Uh, we don't have those extra safeguards that we do have here, but because I think the repeat offense is so high. Anyway, bye guys.